Hi, I'm Shan Wu with a hot take from Under Color of Law on Judge Cannon's rejection of Trump's attempt to dismiss the classified documents case. In the Mar-a-Lago documents case, Judge Eileen Cannon has rejected Trump's bid to dismiss the case based on his claim that the Presidential Records Act would trump the Espionage Act charges. But that hardly means that Special Counsel Jack Smith's case is out of hot water or that it's safe from the threat posed by Judge Cannon on this particular issue. Smith wisely pressed Cannon to have to make a decision on the Presidential Records Act defense. In essence, that defense is simply Trump claiming that as president, he was free to either designate records as his personal records, and alternatively, he also claimed that anything he took with him, which of course would include the documents he secretly took with him that were classified, would automatically be converted to his own personal records or Presidential Records Act documents. That type of an interpretation really helps Trump because it eliminates any possibility of his being charged with a Classified Records Act violation. It's the equivalent of what Trump wants to say is he can declassify records just by thinking about them. Judge Cannon was sitting on Trump's motion to dismiss, as she has been sitting on many decisions, including the setting of a trial date. But she opened herself up to Smith pressing this point when on March 18th, she asked both sides to address two draft jury instructions regarding Trump's Presidential Records Act defense. Both instructions were legally wrong, as they simply adopted Trump's theory of the case. But in crafting Trump's arguments as jury instructions, Judge Cannon made obvious the potential danger that the timing of these instructions might cause the Double Jeopardy Act to further insulate Trump from any prosecution. To understand this danger, one has to remember that jury instructions are typically argued out at the end of the case. That makes sense because that's when the jury is about to get the case. All the evidence has been put in, and now comes the law that will be applied to those facts. Now, most cases don't have particularly unusual jury instructions because most crimes have been tried many, many times, and there are actually model jury instructions set forth in books for lawyers and for judges to reference. Now, you might have some fights about particular language of an instruction. For example, there are competing versions of the reasonable doubt instruction. One version is typically considered more helpful to defense, and one version is typically considered more helpful to the prosecution. But it's very rare for a jury instruction to involve the definition of a crime that, if given, it would basically automatically result in an acquittal. And that's because there's not that much controversy over the definition of the crime. It's the facts that count. Here's an easy way to think about it. Think about a bank robbery case. So in a bank robbery case, the jury instructions will define what are the elements for the robbery. For example, there's a use of force, the robber's trying to take property that does not belong to the robber, i.e. the money in the bank. The kind of instruction that Trump was seeking, if you think about it in the analogy of bank robbery case, would be that the instructions to the jury would actually be the bank robber is the one who decides whether or not the money is theirs or not. If the bank robber thinks the money is theirs, then they're not going to be guilty for a bank robbery. So you can see what the problem would be for Jack Smith's prosecution if that kind of jury instruction was given about the classified documents, meaning if Trump thinks the documents are his, then there is no crime. But it gets worse. That's where the double jeopardy issue arises. So double jeopardy, as we all know, is the provision of the Constitution that says no one can be tried twice for the same crime. What that really means in criminal cases is that while a defendant can appeal a conviction and ask for a redo to throw out the conviction because there's something wrong with the trial or something was wrong with the law, the same is not true for the prosecution. If there's an acquittal, the prosecution can never appeal and seek to try the person again because that's barred by double jeopardy. And importantly, Double jeopardy attaches, meaning it becomes active, once the jury is sworn in. They've been chosen, they're impaneled. That's what we call jeopardy attaching. So if you have a legally erroneous jury instruction, like the kind Judge Cannon was suggesting she would use, 
That's a problem which double jeopardy will insulate the defendant from, meaning you give this very wrong prejudicial jury instruction, which makes sure that the defendant is acquitted, prosecution can't do anything about that. It's too late at that point. Now, Smith warned Judge Cannon that it was really important for her to decide this issue before jeopardy attached. In fact, they made it explicit that they needed time to appeal her decision on this and even threatened to take the extraordinary measure of seeking a writ of mandamus to force her to correct the error. That's a very unusual threat because mandamus is by itself, quote unquote, an extraordinary writ. It's really the equivalent of asking a higher court to tell the lower court to do your job and to do it right. Now, this threat does seem to have galvanized Judge Cannon into actually ruling on Trump's request to dismiss the whole case based on the Presidential Records Act defense, a motion she'd been sitting on and not deciding, much as she hasn't decided yet when the trial date would be. But her very short opinion was sort of disingenuously worded. For example, she tries to suggest that Smith's team had acted unjustly in asking for an anticipatory finalization of jury instructions prior to trial, when actually she, Judge Cannon, she's the one that asked for them to talk about the proposed jury instructions, not Smith. And she said that her request to them shouldn't be misconstrued as having made some decision on any defense or other elements of the law in the case. And she'd simply been asking with good intentions to understand the party's competing positions. So here's the danger. She has said the case can't be dismissed, meaning the charges can't be dismissed on this Presidential Act records uh, defense that Trump wants to use. But that doesn't mean she's closed the door to still using a legally erroneous instruction that would essentially result in Trump's acquittal at a point in time where double jeopardy would make the government unable to do anything about it. If that is what Judge Cannon's planning to do or ends up doing, then Jack Smith still has a couple options. He could seek an appeal during the trial or even a mandamus during the trial to correct what most legal experts would agree is a no-brainer error on the law. But such a tactic, while possible, would take place with the case already in the double jeopardy zone. Smith and his team have pressed this case as smartly and quickly as they can, but the fact remains that having a judge like Eileen Cannon poses a huge danger for the prosecution. Holding aside the question of where she's biased, her indecisiveness in making decisions, including the bizarre decision she reached earlier in trying to assign a special master to the case, they could just reflect her inexperience, putting her into legal waters well over her head in a case of this historical importance. But either way, it's increasingly clear that even without the delay problems posed by her handling of the case, the prosecution faces more than just Trump's defense team. Jack Smith is also having to battle with Judge Eileen Cannon every step of the way. I'm Shan Wu. This is a hot take from Under Color of Law, and we look forward to hearing your comments, and let me know if there's other stuff you want me to talk about. Thanks. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.